a country as beautiful as Ireland, it's important to get off the main roads and search for the road less traveled. So when you're planning your visits to the famous sites and places, take some time to branch out a bit and check out these five secret spots. First up is Douth. Nestled in the Boyne Valley less than an hour north of Dublin, this passage tomb is likely more than 5,000 years old. A passage tomb is a Neolithic era structure that serves as a burial site containing passages to a central chamber. We are at Douth, one of the three great passage tombs here in the Newgrange system just outside of Dublin. This one is not restored and not really excavated, which actually I prefer. Like its more popular neighbors, Newgrange and Nowth, Douth commemorates the winter solstice, and from November to February, the evening rays of the sun reach into the central chamber, cast reflected light, and illuminate decorated stones. The entire hill is ringed with huge curb stones, and if you look closely, some even have ancient carvings. We eventually came upon the Stone of the Seven Suns. The hands that carved these seven suns into the stone likely did so more than 5,000 years ago. I am surrounded by the walls of time. The next secret place on my list takes us south to the Dingle Peninsula and Kilmacader Church. At the end of the Dingle Loop Drive, it's not far from Dingletown, and the site of this 12th century Romanesque construction has roots that reach back to the 7th century. There are several ancient and significant stone features here, including this unique Oem stone in the churchyard. Very few Oem stones have a hole in them like this one, and it's believed it was for swearing an oath, possibly for marriage. This more than 1,300-year-old sundial is considered one of the best examples in all of Ireland. You enter through this beautiful red and green carved three-tiered doorway and find this stone that dates to the 6th century. It's inscribed with the Latin alphabet and the letters D and I, meaning God. Whoever carved this stone did so back in the 12th century, almost a thousand years ago. Sometimes you can just feel the power coming out of the walls of a place like this. Maybe it's just that wind. Next up, we'll head into the Buren of County Clare to Corcomro Abbey, a grand ruin in the middle of nowhere. It dates to the 12th century and is significant in the history of this region of County Clare. It's a national monument open free to visitors, once known as Santa Maria de Petra Petili, or St. Mary of the Fertile Rock. No surprise considering where we are. Corcomro is a Cistercian monastery that was built in 1194. And the Cistercians like to build their monasteries and their abbeys in very remote locations. And that's exactly what this is. It's in the middle of a beautiful fertile valley, but very remote, especially 800 years ago. It's a quiet place and barely anyone was here while we were. It was easy to walk through a doorway and lose yourself in history. Donald O'Brien reigned as king over this region during a violent era, and it's his descendant who's buried here. So I'm told by a local that this is the burial site of Connor O'Brien. It's amazing condition and just an opportunity to really get up close to history here in this part of Ireland. Our next Emerald Isle secret can be found in an off the beaten path corner of the Ring of Kerry, Cashel Steg one of the best preserved ring forts in the south of Ireland. Located on the Ivra Peninsula, Steg sits atop a hill, serenely passing the centuries. Exactly what it was remains a mystery. Well, not much is known about the Steg other than its age, and it does go back to the earliest centuries AD, probably the home of a powerful chieftain. Whoever lived here probably had a lot of resources, and a lot of power and a big need for security. It's really gorgeous up here. Walking these walls is one of those experiences that keeps me coming to places like this and the challenging weather only added to the atmosphere. 
My final off-the-beaten track secret is Ballymastalker Beach in the far northern reaches of County Donegal in Port Salon. Named the second most beautiful beach in the world by The Observer, this one's a real gem. A local told me to take the hair-raising ride up the mountain to experience the view. They warned me I'd get nervous at the steep climb, but as a native of San Francisco, known for the steepest and tallest streets in the world, I wasn't worried. But wow, the steep climb even had me gripping the steering wheel. Megan was right. This is pretty insane. But the payoff. A panoramic view of Ballymastalker Beach on beautiful Loft Swilly is well worth it. The road up here is fairly insane and you do begin to get that feeling at the edge of your seat as you're getting up here toward the crest of the mountain. But the views are just absolutely stunning. And uh, it's just a wonderful end to the day for our loop up here. Couldn't be more beautiful. This is the perfect end of the perfect day up here on the northern loop of our trip here. Just such a gorgeous beach. So gorgeous, I think it would be better if I weren't in it. Mm -hmm.